present Arthur John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> Episode 18, The Menace from the Deep, featuring John Laurie and Ian Lavender with this week's guest, Bill Pertwee. <laughs> Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. With most of Europe echoing to the sound of Nazi jackboots, it seems inevitable to the rest of the world that Britain also will have to succumb to the pressure of Hitler's tyranny. However, in Britain, the people think differently and are determined to stand firm shoulder to shoulder. This is definitely the situation at Warmington-on-Sea as the members of the local Home Guard unit finish their evening inspection. Now, as expected... The Royal Naval Detachment, who have been on guard duty at the end of the pier, were today recalled to Portsmouth. Pompey. I beg your pardon, Fraser, what did you say? Pompey. I believe you call it Pompey. Ah, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Apparently, Ports, uh, Pompey were be, uh, <laughs> won't be able to provide another detachment to take over for a few days yet, and naturally, the authorities are worried that if the pier isn't manned in the meantime, this stretch of coast will be particularly vulnerable. I may have mentioned this to you last night. Yes, you did, sir. Good. I thought perhaps I had. Twice. Yeah, all right. <laughs> we have therefore been entrusted with this highly responsible task. Now, if you all look at this diagram of the pier, which I've drawn, you'll observe the centre of the pier here has been blown up to prevent it being used to land enemy troops. So, because of this, I think you would agree with me that we shall need a boat to get us from this point of the pier here to the end of the pier here. 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 Fraser. <laughs> now, in order to cross this gap in the pier, we shall use a dinghy. Unfortunately, there's only room for three in the boat, so we shall have to make several trips. Now, we need someone to row the boat, someone with a nautical bent. Mr. Speaker. Yes, Joan. I should like to volunteer to have a nautical bent, sir. <laughs> let me do it, sir. Let me row the boat, No, 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 no. I'm sorry, Jones. But I think this task should fall to Fraser. <coughs> After all, he was a sailor. All right, Fraser? Aye, oh, aye, sir. Now, let's just check what food we've got. After all, we're going to be stuck on the end of this pier all night. I've got three pounds of sausages, sir. <laughs> I cooked them at dinner time. Good. My mum's made us a lovely cake. <laughs> Look. Oh, splendid, Pike. And uh, I've got some apples and tomatoes from the garden, sir. Well done, Fraser. Aye, uh, and uh, half a bottle of whiskey, sir, just in case it blows up a bit. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, Wilson, whatever happens, we shan't go short of food, eh? No, sir, we won't. No, it's a positively a gastronomic orgy. <laughs> what have you brought? Half a pound of acid drops. <laughs> They're my favourite. Really? Never have guessed. <laughs> well, man, I think that's the lot. Now, before we... Be... Pike. Yes, sir? What's that you're putting on? It's a scarf, sir. I can see that. What I mean is that you can't wear a purple and orange scarf with your uniform. <laughs> Take it off at once. My mum said I've got to wear it. I'll get croup. <laughs> croup? <laughs> Isn't that what chickens get? <laughs> Yes, it is, but he gets it as well. <laughs> Extraordinary. Well, let's get a move on. I want to get settled on the pier before it gets dark. <coughs> All right, Fraser. Back you go. Pick up the next two. Aye, aye, sir. Come on, Wilson. I gather the machine gun post is right alongside the amusement arcade. So that's probably the best place... For us to dust down. Right, sir. Come on, let's have a look inside. After you, sir. Ah. This looks all right, eh? Oh, yeah, absolutely delightful, sir. <laughs> I will set the Lewis gun up outside and post the first man on watch. The rest of the men can wait in here until their turn comes. Oh, look. There's a hammock. I'll take that. <laughs> oh, really, really, sir. What's the matter? Well, I must protest. Just because you're the officer, you take the hammock. You don't say, may I take the hammock? Or even, do you mind if I take the hammock? You just, you just cross over to it, put your hand on it and say, I'll take that. That sort of behaviour I really just can't stand. I'm 
sorry, Wes. Well, no, no, no. Most unthinking. Most undemocratic of me. As you know from past experience, I'm the last one to take advantage of my position. Oh, very, really, sir. Yes, we should take it in turns to use the hammock. Oh, thank you, sir, thank you. And I'll go first. <laughs> I don't think much of this place, Mr. Mannering. Ah, there you are, James. Do you have a good crossing? Not bad, sir. Mind you, the sea's getting a bit choppy. What shall I do with the Lewis gun, sir? It's getting a bit heavy. Well, set it up in the machine gun post outside and cover it over. Don't want the sea air to get to it. Sir. If Hitler kicks off tonight, we shall be right in the thick of it. <laughs> you know, Wilson, I almost hope that Hitler does ever go tonight. I'm simply spoiling for a fight. Which reminds me, we ought to phone GHQ and let them know we're in position. Should be a field telephone here somewhere. What? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, there it is, over there. Over in the corner by that pin table. Right. I'll ring GHQ while you put the blackout, sir. <laughs> Hello, sir. Captain Manring reporting. We've taken up our positions on the pier, and we're ready for anything that Hitler can throw at us. <laughs> we're as snug as a bug in a rug here. A bug in a rug, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you can rest assured that the only way Jerry will get past us is over our dead bodies. Thank you, sir. Good night. <laughs> That's the sort of fighting talk they like to hear at GHQ. Yes, sir. <laughs> Lewis guns in position, sir. Well done, Joan. Private Fraser and Pike reporting for duty, sir. Jolly good. Come in, both of you. I've tied the boat up, Mr. Manreen. Well done, Pike. Hey, Uncle Arthur. Hmm? Look, if you look down between these floorboards, you can see the sea below. Why do they always have them so far apart? Well, they're always like that on piers, Frank. You know, if I was a little mouse, I could fall down one of those cracks. <laughs> yes, well, you're not, are you? So you don't have to worry about that. Thank you. All right, man, settle down. I'll just give you the orders for the night. Now, we're on duty until 6.30 in the morning. According to my watch, time... Is now, uh, fi it's five minutes to twenty one hundred hours. Twenty fifty five, sir. Yes. <laughs> well, that's what the time is. Now, I've drawn up a rotor, and it works out at an hour and a half's guard duty each. Fraser, you'll take the first watch. Yes, sir. That's, um, twenty one hundred to twenty two thirty. Walker, 2230 to 2400 hours. Pike, 2400 to 2530. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir, you see, it's uh, 0130, you see. You start again when you get to 2400. Do you? Yes. Yes. All right. Pike, 2400 to 0130. Jones, 0130 to 0300. Sandwilson, 0300 to 0430. Godfrey, 0430 to 0600. And I shall take the last one, 0600 to 0630. Hey, hey, hey. I thought you said it worked out an hour and a half's duty each. Well, it's not my fault, but there's only half an hour left for me to do, is it, Fraser? <laughs> anyway, you're on first, so you'd better get outside. Now, we'll see about something to eat. Hey, hey, you'll not forget about me outside, will you? It's going to be awfully cold out there. No, it's all right, Fraser, all right. But just close that door, will you? You're letting in a terrible draw. Oh, you poor nickety gum of a way to run and chop it. <laughs> what did Fraser say, Wilson? I don't know, sir. It sounded like Gaelic or something. <laughs> Whatever it was, it didn't sound very nice. <laughs> right, Pike, where's the food? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I left it in the boat. Well, go and get it at once, you stupid boy. Right, oh, Mr. Manreen. Can't wait to get my teeth into one of Jones's succulent sausages. Mm. I've got them just as you like them, Mr. Manry. Lovely and crisp on the outside and pink in the middle. Very tasty. Very sweet. Oh. Sound marvellous. Yes. Yeah. Permission to speak, sir. Who's going to sleep in the hammock? <laughs> We're going to take it in turns. Captain Manry is going to be first. Fancy that. <laughs> I shall relinquish it when I go on duty. <laughs> ah, there you are, Pike. Put the food on the table. Y yeah, well, Mr. Manning... Come on, Pike, come on, come on. Don't, don't stand there, boy. Put the food on the table. But I, I don't know what to say, Mr. Manning. What do you mean? Well, I can't put the food on the table, because I haven't got it. You don't mean to say that you left the food behind. Oh, no, sir, I brought it with me. Food's in the boat, all right. 
There's only one snag. What's that? The boat's gone. What? <laughs> you mean you didn't tie the boat up? Oh, yes, sir, I tied it up. You see, see, there were two cables. A big, thick electric one and a thin one. I tied it to the thin one. Why did you do that? Well, I didn't want to touch the thick one. I might have got electricity fired. You stupid boy. You must have tied it to the telephone wire. Let's see. <laughs> Just as I thought. It's dead. We're marooned. Completely cut off from the outside world. No phone, no boat. And no food. And no... No panic, no panic. We're marooned, we're marooned on the end of the pier. Don't no panic. Joe, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Be quiet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Manning, I am really. Oh, all right, Pike. But, Mr. Speak, sir. Yes, Jim. Couldn't we signal for help, sir? We could flash a light. That's a good idea. Well done. Right, Wilson. Give it the torch. <laughs> I haven't got a torch, sir. <laughs> you mean to say that you didn't bring the torch? You never said anything about bringing a torch. I distinctly remember telling you. When I told you to return our library books. No, 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 sir. <laughs> I remember you asked me to buy some dyspepsia tablets, but I'm quite no, sure... Oh, yeah, all right. Oh, oh, never mind. I'll talk to you about this later. So, oh, Mr. Mannering, there was a story in Hotspur last week. <laughs> and Dave Dombey got locked in the cricket pavilion one night at Red Circle School. Now, he opened and closed the window to signal for help. Look, boy, this is no time to be recounting schoolboy stories. I mean... That's a very good idea, Pike. <coughs> We'll use this window. Then they can see the light on the shore. Mr. Speak, sir, I would like to volunteer to be the one to open and shut the window so they'll see the light on the shore. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jones. But I think Sam Wilson ought to do it. We'll use Morse code, of course. But I don't know Morse code no. for a start. <laughs> yeah. I know the Morse code, so I know Morse code. What you want is SOS. It's three dots, three dashes, and three dots. You see, it's did da 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 did it did Right. Rob Wilson, get ditting. What? What's that? <laughs> Come on, man. Dit, dit, dit. Yes, all right, all right. But don't, please don't, don't rush me. Let's see now. Dit. Dit. Oh, no. This window. Oh, my goodness. It re <laughs> really is awfully... Oh, awfully stiff. Dit. That last one was no good at all. It was a dance instead of a ditch. You're dying when you should be ditting. <laughs> I can't help it, the window's sticking. Don't get out of the way. Let me do it. We've got to attract the attention of someone on the shore. Dit, dit, dit. Ah. Whew. Chilly tonight, Mr. Origin. <laughs> I'll have to go and get the promenade patrol. Yeah, it is a bit drafty. Still, you must be warm in that nice new uniform of yours. Look, mate, I've done old years' service in the ARP to get this uniform. I've earned it. I'm sorry. Well, I should think so. Hey, just a minute. Look, there's a light flashing. Where? At the end of the pier. Look, there it is again. Must be old Mannering and his mob. They're on guard out there tonight, taken over from the Navy. Oh, I might have guessed it was them. Just the sort of stupid thing they would do. They're always shown a light that lot. I've got to have a word with them. Yes, that's it. I've got to, I've got to get out of them. I must get out there and have a word. Don't be daft. You need a boat. Yeah, yeah you're right. I need a boat. Well, there aren't any. You know the regulations. People aren't allowed to leave boats around in wartime. Oh, that's true. Wait a minute. I'll use one of those over there. What, from the Peter Pan boating pool? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll show Mannering. But you'll never get out there in one of those paddle boats. They're for kids. You just watch me. Come on, give me a hand. Come on. I've got to get out there. I've got to get out of Mannering. Come Mannering, come Mannering. Can he come outside quickly, sir? Coming, Fraser. What is it? I'm, I'm not really sure, sir, but there seems to be something in the sea. Look, near the shore, over there. I do feel right. Well done, Fraser. Thank you, sir. Whatever it is, it's making a lot of splashing. What do you make of it, Wilson? It's already dark, sir, but it looks like a small boat. That's suspicious. After all, what sort of person puts out to sea in a small boat at the dead of night? Permission to speak, sir. Yes, Jones. It's my opinion, sir, that it could be someone of evil intent. Or an enemy saboteur returning to his mother's ship. Oh, really, Jones, please. Your imagination, really, I mean... Uh... No, 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 just, just, just a minute, Wilson. Jones could be right. What are we going to do, Mr. Manreen? Well, there's no point in trying to hail him. With this wind, he'd never hear us. 
Fraser? Sir? Mandel Lewis, come. Aye, aye, come. Do you think that's wise, sir? Go, oh, never mind. <laughs> Only a warning shot. Make him show his hand. If he's innocent, he's nothing to fear. All the same, Fraser, when you do fire, make sure you aim in front of whatever it is. I will, that's Very, very peculiar. What is Fraser? Whatever it is, it has disappeared. <laughs> Can't have disappeared. Can you see anything, Wilson? Nothing, sir. Nothing at all. It's all rather eerie. Permission to speak, sir. It could be a secret weapon. You're very ridiculous, Joan. That thing came from the shore. If it was a secret weapon, it wouldn't be coming at us from our own side, would it? Perhaps that's what the secret is. <laughs> Here. What's that funny noise? Mr. Manry, look! Look! There's a... There's a... A thing coming up the ladder out the sea. <laughs> Please, can I shoot it? No, 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 no. Leave it to me, Frank. All right, keep quiet, everybody. You stupid load of hooligans! Hooligans is what you are! Hodges, what do you think you're doing? Oh, didn't you know? I take a dip like this every night. <laughs> Put on my new uniform, especially. I came out to see you, of course. Oh, how awfully thoughtful of you. <laughs> We're perfectly all right, aren't we, sir? You were flashing a light. Oh, good, good, you saw it. Of course I saw it, and so could an enemy aircraft. Oh, stop grumbling. Get inside and get those wet clothes off. You haven't heard the end of this. Wait till I get back on dry land. I'm going to r r report you. <laughs> no, for heaven's sake, shut up. <laughs> Been sitting there moaning for the last hour. <laughs> You've given your blanket while your uniform's drying out. What more do you want? Dr. Mannering, could I have a word with you? Yes, what is it? Well, don't upset him too much, sir. He's the best bowler I've got in the cricket team. <laughs> <laughs> we need him next Sunday. Oh, I can't help that. He's got to learn to control himself. Yes, well, please go carefully, sir. I think, I think all of us are a little bit on edge, you know, what with... One thing and another. Yes. You're probably right. All right, men, gather round. Hi, sir. Now, look, I'm, I'm sorry things have turned out like this, but we shall just have to make the best of a bad job and stick it out until morning. If only we had something to eat, sir. I mean, I absolutely starved. You're not the only one, Wilson. We're all starving. Mr. Manreen. Yes, Mike. You know those amusement machines where you operate a little crane inside and try to pick things up with it? You know, you win what you manage to pick up, you see. Well, I found one over there. It's full of bars of chocolate. Look, boy, I've told you, this is no time to be... What did you say? I said, you know those amusement machines where no, you... No, never mind that. But what, what did you say after that? I said it was full of bars of chocolate. You hear that, Wilson? Yes, sir. Actually, I heard what he said the first time. <laughs> Lead on, Pike. Let's have a look. It's over here, sir. By Jove, yes, you're right. Lots of lovely bars of chocolate. That's a bit of luck, eh, Wilson? I should say so, sir, yes. If you'd like to step back a moment, I'll... What are you uh, going to do? Well, I, I'm going to smash the glass, sir, to, to get the chocolate out. Smash the glass? Yes. <laughs> Take the leave of your senses. Oh, no. We're not savages, you know. <laughs> We're a properly disciplined army of fair-minded sporting Britishers. <laughs> not a lot of Nazis. That's just the sort of thing they'd do. No, 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 no. We should take this chocolate by fair means. Let's see if I've got any pennies. <laughs> oh, what a pity. I don't seem to have any. What about you, Sergeant? No, sir, no. I'm afraid I haven't got any either. Fraser? Hmm? I? Yes, I'll... I've got one. Well, hand it over. Oh, no, uh, oh, uh, It's for the good of the platoon, Fraser. Oh, all right, here you are. Now, let's see. Where do I put the penny? In this slot here, sir. Ah, yes. Here, it's my penny. I should want the controls. All right, Fraser. Off you go. There you are. Right, right, right a bit. <laughs> Lift it up. I don't want any interference. I can manage my own thingy. <laughs> All he did was a wee bit of skill. Come on, Mr. Fraser. Come on. Oh, 
I'm afraid you're out of luck, Fraser. Oh, no. That was my penny. You hear me? It was my penny. All right, all right. Why don't you make a song and dance about a silly penny? Well, it wasn't a your penny, was it? That'll do, Fraser. Here's a... If I might make a suggestion. Yes, what is it, Wilson? I wonder if I could perhaps try. <laughs> Haven't you been paying attention? We haven't got any more pennies. I know that, sir. At the same time, if I could put my plan into operation. Oh, very well. I think what we need to do is to give the machine a thump on the side here. And possibly a kick just about here. Isn't that to do the trick? Yes. <laughs> there you are, sir. You know, Wilson, you never cease to amaze me. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Where did you learn that trick? Well, sir, you see, since you insist on taking the keys of the safe with you every time you leave the bank, the only way I can get the safe open is by kicking it. Kicking it? Yes. Aren't you aware, Wilson, that head office has just spent a fortune on installing that safe? I dread to think what they'd have to say. Well, they might suggest you leave your keys behind next time, sir. Well, all right, all right. Anyway, we can't take the chocolate like this. It's stealing. Not really, sir. No. After all, we put a penny in the machine and there's a war on. I'm sure the man who owns it will be only too pleased to help the war effort. Oh, very well. Perhaps you're right. Here are, Fraser. Oh, since you were so upset about losing your miserable penny, you can have the first bar. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, and the blue of the night. Uh, just a minute. W Wilson, Wilson. This man's drunk. I'm afraid he is, sir, yes. How did that happen? Well, you see, sir, uh, Fraser gave him his bottle of whiskey to, you know... Uh, sip, you know, for a little. Warm himself up. After being in the scene, he seems to have drunk the whole lot. Disgusting. Oh, you're, you're, you're talking about me, aren't you? Oh, shut up and go sit down. You're drunk. Uh, don't you tell me to shut up. And cover yourself up. Put that blanket around it properly. <laughs> Standing there half naked, you look revolting. Oh, oh I, I'm revolting now, am I? Look, I've had about enough of you, fat so. <laughs> We're, we're, we're going to have this out here, here and now. Come on, come on, pull, pull, pull her up, pull her up. Oh, don't be so stupid. I'm too busy fighting the hunt to engage in pugilism with you. <laughs> don't you swear at me. Don't you call me fat, sir. 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 sir, for the sake of the cricket team, why don't you just give him a bar of chocolates? Sir? Oh, very well. Give him one. Hey, Warden, here. And don't make a pig of yourself with this. Here's yours, Wilson. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Who realised, Wilson? This chocolate must be two years old. <laughs> Lord Fraser, it didn't take you long to eat your bar. What's oh. it like? Well, no bad at all. No bad at all. A wee bit soapy, but no bad at all. Eh, 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 what is your game, Mannering? This chocolate's made of cardboard. <laughs> Mr. Mannering, they're all dummies. They're horrible. I can't eat these. Oh, Mine was all right. <laughs> You, you, you gave me that cardboard chocolate deliberately. <laughs> Mannering, you, you don't like me. Of course we do. We are very fond of you. No, no, you don't. Nobody likes me. I'm the most unpopular person in Warmington on sea. Just because I tell them to pull the lights out. Go oh, be quiet and lie down. Somebody's got to tell them to put their lights out. Somebody's got to tell them it just happens to be me. I can't well. What a sordid little episode. <laughs> Mr. Manrin, Mr. Manrin, wake up, sir. Wake up. Oh, no, oh, no, yes, what, 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 oh, yes, it's, what me, you do? it's me, sir, it's me, sir. <clears throat> what do you want? Well, sir, there's a strange object bobbing about down there. Oh, good Lord, don't ever the wardens fall into the sea again. <laughs> no, sir, he's asleep over there. Oh, well, suppose I'd better have a look. Which board did you look through, Jones? This one, sir. Right. Let's have a look. Good Lord. Can't be. It is. It's a mine. Oh, well, if it's yours, that's all right, then. <laughs> I wonder where it comes from. I said thing. it's a mine, you fool. A mine. And it's trapped under the pier. I don't like the sound of that. Come on. <laughs> Got to get down there. Not a moment to lose. I'll take this boat hook. Right, sir. You bring the other one. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Right, sir. Right. 
Wake up, everybody! Wake up! Don't panic! Don't panic! Smile under the pier! Don't what? panic! Where? What? Over here, Jones! Come in, Mr. Manorin! Now listen, Jones. Whatever you do, don't let the mind touch the girders or we shall all be blown sky high. Look out! It's coming towards you. Use your boat hook to push it away. Go- push it away! I am pushing it away, sir. I don't think it wants to go. <laughs> yes. All right, I've got it, I've got it. To you, sir. To me. Thank you, Joe. We can't stand here all day pushing it backwards and forwards. What are you going to do? How should I know? Look, they started drifting out to sea. Right. We must blow it up before it does any damage. Fraser, Manda Lewis, come. Aye, sir. The rest of you use your rifles. Sir. Take aim, and in your own time, fire. Yes, sir. Look at her. Look, it's drifting towards the shore. Don't talk, Fraser. Keep firing. Aye, sir. It's going towards the novelty rock emporium. Keep firing, man. We can't, Mr. Mannery. We can't. We've run out of ammunition. Here, what's going on? Blimey, is that a mine? Oh, you've sobered up, have you? <laughs> yes, of course it is. We're trying to blow it up before it does any damage. <laughs> right, this is an ARP matter. I'll take charge. Good. We've run out of ammunition. Oh, truth. Here, hang on a minute. I've got an idea. I'll be back in a minute. Where's he gone, Wilson? Uh, to the coconut shy, I think, sir. <laughs> it's no time for childish games. Right, here we are. Right, now let's have a go. Just a minute, just a minute. What do, you, what do you think you're going to do with that wooden ball? Blow that mine up. With that? Yeah, of course. Why not? You know, sir, he bowls a superb Yorker. <laughs> Even so, I bet he doesn't hit it. It's a ridiculous idea. How much? A fiver? Yes, very well. All right, you're on. Here we go, then. Now stand back, stand back, everybody. Right, now watch. Oh. It's going straight towards it, sir. So it is. Good oh, Lord. Ah, Jeff Wilson, you're right. He is a good bowler. Yes, sir. He does even better with his clothes on. <laughs> that episode of Dad's Army from the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard... Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurier, Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Laurie, Private Fraser, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, ARP Warden, and David Sinclair as the Second Warden. The Menace from the Deep was adapted for radio by Harold Snowd and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dias.